Authorities in China are strengthening their efforts to stamp out unrest over stringent COVID measures. University students seen as prime protesters have been sent home. Police are out in force. But despite some measures being relaxed in some places, the dissent is widespread and ongoing. It's a display of public rage not seen in China for decades. And what began as opposition to strict anti-COVID restrictions has moved into something bigger. A thinly disguised challenge to those in power, from Beijing to Hong Kong. We don't want authoritarianism. We want human rights. We don't want monarchy. Freedom! The protests have become too loud to ignore. The ruling Communist Party has staged a massive show of force by security services and vowed a resolute crackdown on what it's labelled sabotage activities by hostile forces. This is what the crackdown looked like in Guangzhou through the lens of a citizen's mobile phone. Large numbers of police in personal protective equipment patrolling the streets with riot shields. Here and in other major cities, People reported that their mobile phones were checked for photos, banned apps or other potential evidence that they had taken part in the demonstrations. Beijing has made clear it won't tolerate dissent. China is a country governed by the rule of law, and the various legal rights and freedoms enjoyed by Chinese citizens are fully guaranteed in accordance with the law. At the same time, any rights and freedoms must be exercised within the framework of the law. In an apparent concession to demonstrators, authorities have eased some anti-COVID measures and announced a new push to vaccinate vulnerable groups. But it may not be enough to quell this type of anger. In a recent video, also from Guangzhou, Protesters can be seen toppling a PCR testing tent and throwing objects at riot police. Over the last few days, demonstrations have also spread beyond China's borders. These people protesting in Toronto, Canada. Containing all dissent everywhere is a challenge even the powerful Chinese Communist Party is unlikely to win. Uh, journalist Fabian Kretschmer joins us now uh, from Beijing for the latest. Uh, Fabian, fresh cl clashes in the southern, southern city of Guangzhou broke out overnight as authorities warn of crackdowns. What more do you know? Yeah, the videos uh, seem to be from last night. It shows that residents were clashing with the police. The police dressed in full hazmat suits. They're um, wearing shields to protect themselves. The residents are throwing uh, rocks at the police. And, you know, those um, uh, protests, we don't know the details, but they seem to be anti-lockdown protests. Why? Because they happen in the same district where similar incidents happened before two weeks ago. And uh, let me tell you, those incidents are really extremely risky. The surveillance state in China has a lot of uh, measures to track down uh, people who participated in, in those, uh, yeah, a form of civil disobedience and they get punished. I mean, it's really quite rare and risky to do so. Now, do you think that the protests actually are having an impact? Well, lockdowns do continue. Also, the mandatory transferring of suspected COVID cases to quarantine centers uh, continues. The zero COVID policy in general also continues. Well, I expect that, you know, the, the government is listening to uh, some demands of the protesters. Namely, it will be cautious to not, uh, you know, provoke too much uh, additional public anger. I'm sure about that. But every political demand by the protesters will be met with a lot of repressions. We know that by now that was clearly stated also by the government who has given basically a clear warning. Here in Beijing, at the first night of the protest uh, in Sunday night, the uh, police was rather cautious, but anything that, that happened further or will continue will be met with repression. Now, how are Chinese media reporting on these protests? 
Well, not directly. Uh, there are some vague mentions of, you know, the stability must be upheld, etc. But uh, there are no direct mentions of the protests themselves. But on social media, we see a campaign of, you know, influencers who basically spread conspiracy theories about anti-China forces, uh, quote unquote, foreign forces who, you know, uh, uh, provoke those protests or even uh, the U.S. government paying those protesters, which, of course, there's no credible claim for, no, no uh, proofs at all. Fabian Kretschmer there reporting from Beijing. Thank you, Fabian. And now I'm joined by Reinhard Bütikofer. He's the chairman of the European Parliament's delegation for relations with China. And the Chinese government imposed sanctions against him last year. Mr. Bütikofer, if you look at the protests in China right now, have they uh, become um, about more than just the COVID restrictions, you think? Yes, indeed, I would say so. Uh, Normally, uh, China knows a lot of protests. Migrant workers uh, protesting their working conditions or farmers that have been tricked off their land protesting against that. But all these traditional protests have been localized and single issue. And here for the first time in a long while, in decades, citizens come together as citizens from different backgrounds nationwide and protest. I think that is having a transformative effect on the relationship between the oppressors and the oppressed. Mm. Now, uh, the EU's Council President Charles Michel is scheduled to travel uh, to China and hold talks yes. with President Xi next week. What message should he take? I believe Charles Michel should uh, bring two messages to Xi Jinping. Number one, uh, the European Union still is ready to repeat its offer that we made a month ago. We made at the EU-China summit in April that we are willing to provide our vaccines to help China find a way out of the uh, predicament in which she has um, put them by insisting on his zero COVID policies without having um, a sufficient vaccination strategy. Secondly, he should also uh, make it very clear that we are observing uh, very intently what they do in their now announced crackdown and that we are willing to raise this if need be in international organizations and also to respond with additional sanctions. Mm. Now, Xi Jinping recently consolidated his power as a party leader. Do you think his position is threatened by these protests? Well, as he has concentrated all the power in his own hands, obviously a protest like this immediately lands at his doorstep on his desk. Uh, so that is the shortcoming of being a dictator, in a way. On the other hand, I don't think that there is an organized opposition against him within the ranks of the Communist Party. So <clears throat> I don't think that he's weakened within the context of uh, his uh, supporters, but certainly the control that the Communist Party has as a whole has been weakened because for the first time in a long while, as I said before, protesters have found a common language to express their own hopes and their own demands nationwide. Do you think these protests will actually have an effect? I believe they will have an effect. They are having effects locally. We hear from Lumchi, for instance, that the local authorities are trying to soften somewhat the zero COVID approach. Um, that may be transitory, but the longer lasting uh, transformative effect that I expect is that um, the, uh, the experience of protesting, being able to uh, uh, have nationwide activities where people learn from each other, uh, that will have uh, a very great effect on the uh, future mobilization of 
citizens were not content with the governing uh, policies of the Communist Party. Rana Butikova there, member of the European Parliament, thank you very much. Thank you indeed.